I think Samara's goals for her residency were opening up her practice and um, learning to collaborate. So uh, with us, it was um, it was had its challenges. It had its ups and downs. Um, one of the biggest challenges was COVID shutting down. Um, we kind of had to reset and rethink and pause. Um, but in the end, it really um, gave us an opportunity to reflect and think about the pro project and what it was. Um, some other challenges, she had some personal things in her life. Um, one of them was her brother-in-law passed away. But again, that just added to the depth and meaning of the piece. Um, but overall, uh, I, think, I think Samara did learn how to open up her practice and collaborate. Um, so some of the first tests and experiments we did together uh, was when I went to LA and worked with her in her studio. Um, we built a scale model of our eighth floor gallery together and then started to experiment with mirrors and worked with um, opening up the space and you know changing the angle to kind of crack open um, the view and the gallery space into this new, new world. Um, and we were playing with angles and that's when we discovered um, this new architecture, the lighthouse with our um, gallery window. So collaborating with Samara was different because she was, uh, she's a very insular artist and she works very solo. Um, so it was a challenge kind of cracking that Samara code, I guess, in the way she thinks. I mean, you, you dive into every project with an artist and you start, you try to think like them and, and process and experiment and everything. But with Samara, her, the wave she, she thinks is so, uh, almost like a spider web, it's just like out there. And she's, she's thinking about various things at once. And so you're trying to kind of piece those threads together. And in your mind, you think you have it, but in reality, it's the puzzle pieces come together looking totally different. So that was interesting and fun and challenging. Um, but I think she learned how to communicate more too and little communicate better. We had lots of long talks about things. Uh, so one of my favorite experiments uh, with Samara was with the thermochromic inks. Um, it was really fun to mix the different colors um, and the thermochromic pigments together and layer them up and watch the different colors interact and expose when you touch them. So it was always a surprise because we'd mix you know, green with yellow, get a chartreuse green, but then lay it over a pink, and then you get this like rich burgundy or some, some weird color um, that when you touched it, it, it exposed it. So that was really, that was really fun. So the goal of the optical light test was really to help the users or the audience experience something that she had um, during a hospital stay. She had had some uh, visual hallucinations, essentially, which were these, uh, she described them as static animals, sort of like television static, but more colorful and having taken the shapes of like small woodland creatures and things. And so we were really trying to figure out how a person could see what she was seeing at that time. To achieve this, we tried a bunch of different experiments, some with light, some with um, clear filaments and 3D printing. We were using lenticular printing and sort of optical illusions. Early on, we were even doing things with like Pepper's ghosts and, and glass and mirrors and, and sort of two-way refraction. Ultimately, the color-changing lights, she found kind of the richest vein to tap. and. We spent the most time dealing with kind of these flashing RGB lights and these different textures and patterns that would kind of recreate that sort of noise vision effect. One of the really nice things about working with Samara is she has a really specific vision. And in trying to achieve that, you can get into like some really nitty gritty of, of whatever it is that you're doing. So I ended up actually finding a guidebook on stroboscopy um, or like the science of strobing lights in order to really understand how vision works. I ended up like learning so much more about my eyes and just how kind of the whole process of seeing and light uh, works for the human brain. And ultimately we didn't 
get to exactly where she wanted, but we got really close and she was really excited about some of the new tools that we had kind of learned with her and uh, some maybe ideal future goals of actually getting into the science and really making it happen. I mean, the process of figuring out how to hang stuff in the ceiling was long. <laughs> we initially thought that it was going to have to be more of a constructed thing with wood substructure in order to make sure you know, it maintained its position over eight months or whatever, of the run of the show. Um, but then we realized that weight was going to be a huge factor. So then it quickly transitioned from this behemoth wood arc up in the ceiling to something more manageable out of cardboard. And then that enabled us to be a little bit more nimble in the design, which was great because we translated the ceiling to the floor so that we could work essentially turning the whole installation upside down to recreate it. Um, but the ceiling is very different from the model that we made, the scale model we made on the floor. Um, so having cardboard there that was malleable and could kind of like be forced into place was in a, to our advantage. Uh, and then another thing was, fig well, so that was one thing. Then figuring out how to like just attach things to concrete. So they're, you know, concrete screws and guns that literally use like uh, 22 shot or whatever, I don't even know, like gunpowder <laughs> in order to shoot nails into the ceiling. So we had to use those. Um, we had a cleat system that we got, you know, consulted on that was this sort of beautiful 45 miter cleat, but that was too precise. So we had to like really open it up. So then we had just lots of wiggle room. Um, so yeah, those are some details. Some of the key projects that I started on in Samara's residency were the half scale objects. So the first thing I built to kind of like test the waters and see where my you know, dexterity skills fit in terms of making half scale things uh, was making a stool. You know, like the kind of like the art school stool, you know, with the metal rim and the mason knight top. So I did one of those to half scale um, using a paint bucket that we had. I like cut off the top of that and used that for the rim and then had some dowels for the legs of the stool. So that was good. That like like dipping my toes in the water with that one. And then I went straight from there into a lazy boy recliner that I imagine was, you know, really beat up and loved. And so I had duct tape that I like, you know, just ripped in half to make half scale duct tape to have the sections where the head was just constantly rubbing during naps, during Price is Right, that type of <laughs> detail. <laughs> one of the biggest lessons that I learned, Samara, quote, the strategic move of the 76ers is to trust the process, which um, I think is in any artist's project, you know, one's personal project, or in any endeavor where you could just don't know where you're going to end up. Um, it's just believing in the process, believing in for Samara and us, like the team working on the process, and that we'll, through that process, discover what we need to discover and figure out how to make it work. Because uh, there were multiple times during this project where it felt like we were totally lost and uh, or had not even totally lost, but maybe like overly found in terms of potential directions we could go and um, choosing from those like truly divergent paths as a team ended up being, I think, uh, to great advantage for the project or like actually contributed a lot. Like all of us being involved in all of those decisions uh, made for a stronger final piece. Uh, all the objects are uh, half scale. And uh, the first things that I made was um, light fixtures, which uh, you see in the studio. So I grabbed them and, uh, you know, measure them and uh, do all half scale. Uh, it was easy, you know, the object was in front of us, so mimic the all the, you know, wires, coils, and all that, and uh, it was quite fun. So, uh, Samara really wanted to us to make, um, like, a very mundane object, and uh, the day I know I, had, I have a time to make one, 
So I look at the, you know, in the kitchen, and I saw the blender. It's old blender. Um, uh, I think we bought second hand, and uh, anyone can recognize that blender. So I took a picture from a different angles, and uh, yeah, it's it's uh, kind of funny that you know you see that blender every day, but when you know you have to make it, you really have to look from different angles. And even I flipped it and took a pictures and I brought that here. And because I have that vision, I could you know, wrap up very quickly. And also material to uh, summarize, uh, you know, I think uh, when she first came here, she showed, uh, I think, Abby how to make a cupcake in a small scale. So she got little paper things uh, from the store, and she used you know uh, expandable, expandable form, and so quickly showed us. So she always like you know looking for the materials, and uh, I did the same too. So I, I look at the blender, and you know you need a clear cup section. So uh, I think I flipped the orange juice you know uh, cup, I mean container, to create that section. But you know it's always like after. Uh, we started Samara's project. I think everybody, you know, your eyes are keen to like uh, uh, the materials you can use to create the half object. I mean, we weren't even halfway through the installation. We were two weeks away from opening the exhibition and presenting it to the public. So, uh, yeah, I guess I practically the shutdown just thwarted this deadline, this objective that we had been working uh, toward for about a year, this like, schedule that we had been abiding by. Uh, we were supposed to open the exhibition the first week of April, and two weeks before we hit that deadline, tools down, everybody out, uh, we had to go home. I guess it was maybe a month or so into the shutdown when we realized that it was going to be a long haul. <laughs> uh, so at that point, uh, you know, the artists and the collaborators at the museum, we tried to think of new visual elements that we could incorporate into what we had already made together or uh, find new uh, conceptual threads or ideas that we could weave uh, into the installation as it stood when we had to leave. Uh, maybe we were just, I don't know, we were trying to make good use of this like time that we weren't supposed to have, this like extension of the deadline that uh, we weren't expecting. Uh, we weren't even sure how long that extension was going to be, or this like pause on production. So um, maybe we were just not to be crass. Maybe we were trying to just like keep our hands busy and find like some use of our time uh, while we were stuck at home, or uh, maybe we were I don't know trying to like layer additional meaning onto the installation as it stood. Uh, I feel like the installation was always going to be sort of complex and a little bit menacing and for some people sort of anxiety inducing, but I feel like with the additional six months that we had that spirit of like confusion and anxiety and maybe like um, maybe desperation is a, a harsh way to put it, but just desperate to like find meaning or find purpose in this time where there's really nothing to do and uh, we can't go anywhere. So uh, yeah, I feel like all of that ended up like making its way into the installation. One thing I learned from Samara and from the process of working with Samara is that uh, there doesn't need to be a clear answer to every question that a work of art can prompt. Uh, things can just stay messy and uh, confusing, and that's perfectly acceptable. So one of the first experiments I did with this project was figuring out ways to build 
or recreate a giant rock, like a, a landscape within the context of the gallery. Um, so with that was a lot of material tests. We built a rolling platform with several different cement and concrete samples. Um, we knew one of the issues would be that if we were building, we were thinking at the time a 1200 square foot rock, uh, how do we reconcile the weight of that? So we um, did some experiments and reached out to different manufacturers and we found this really awesome lightweight concrete. Um, and uh, turns out we never used it, but we did do a lot of fun experiments and uh, we got to tour a facility, um, uh, like this big fabrication studio, and we all got to learn how to use um, this specific material. And so that was really great. Um, so that was definitely one of the highlights of the project was um, we were able to experiment with a lot of materials. And, and even though it's a little bit frustrating that we don't always use like all the things we learned, um, it's, it was still like, a great pro it was still a great process and a great part of the project uh learning all these new skills and new materials um but that was a huge part of, of samara's project too is is you know we, we we all are we we are all artists and we all have our own like ways of working and methods of working and we all had to learn how to let go a little bit more than usual i think uh so we couldn't be too precious about things and i think that was an important thing to learn in this project too like don't be too don't be too precious just keep moving the thing you spent hours on is probably gonna get ripped in half and covered in resin and like that's just part of it and it's not personal um yeah so that's that was one of the first things i worked on and kind of set the tone for the project i think too so, like there had to be so many tests because it wasn't like there was no clear point a to point b like <laughs> it was all that middle space so like um and you know, I, I I don't know a ton about Samara's process. Like I didn't know a ton about it before, but it seems like she does. Like she works alone. She works in her own space, and like we were occupying that space, but we weren't actually allowed access to it. So like, you know, we had to like interpret it as it happened, and that that's hard to do as an outsider. You know, kind of afterwards, you're like, maybe we all are alone. You're like we don't know what's going on in your head, <laughs> um, but it's okay because like something came together and something eventually happened. And uh, but I, I think that's. Yeah, I think that's, I think that is part of it with, and that's also why like people like curators are so important is like you help make those connections um, and help make it all make sense. I do think Samara's process taught me a lot about like just having faith in process. <laughs> um, I think, I mean, out of the, the three artists we, like I worked with at the workshop, she was definitely the most process based in like the truest sense of like, you have to like, that's not only a process of like working through materials and tests, but you also are processing the information that you get as you, as it comes to you. And like, um, I think it also forced me, like it's a, it's her process is also one that forces you to slow down, I think. And I think her piece will also force you to slow down and like reflect and think. And, um, I don't know if like, just like where we are in the world, like culturally, maybe that also made it really hard. <laughs> To be like, uh, like we we're used to immediacy. We want quick responses. We have deadlines for like grants. We have to turn around like ideas really fast. But that's not that's not realistic for everyone. And I think it's a good thing to remember that too, and to also slow down and work that way sometimes, because um, the results can be really great, as you can see in this show. <laughs> so yeah, um, just like there's like a, you know another thing it, it teaches you too. It's like there's a million ways to do something. And like, like there's a, like, how do you put a sand dune in the ceiling? Like, I don't know, I don't know. There's probably a hundred ways you can just screw something into the ceiling, but like, I don't, I don't, yeah. So there's like a lot of that of like, somebody has one opinion and someone else has another opinion and like, don't hurt feelings, but I think this is better than that. Or like, <laughs> you know, um, so I, I mean, that, that was a huge part of the project too. 